This is Twit. This episode of Tech Break is brought to you by ACI Learning. Enjoy elevating your IT skills with IT Pro from ACI Learning. Get exclusive access to practice labs, tests with real-world simulations, hands-on experience, and test preparation. Learn the way that works best for you. Visit go.acilearning.com slash twit to transform your talent with the best-in-class education from passionate experts. All right, now let's talk about libraries. Uh, according to Mike Masnick, <laughs> big book publishers do not like libraries. He says, if, if libraries were invented today, they would do everything in their power to kill them. Of course, they exist, so they claim to love libraries. But meanwhile, in front of the Supreme Court, and I'm this case worries me, the publishers going after, and this includes Hachette, uh, Simon & Schuster, all the big publishers going after the Internet Archives, because, and we talked about when uh, Brewster Kale did this at the beginning of COVID, they had a lending library where they would do, they would t libraries would lend them a book, a physical book. Or, or, they would, or people would lend them a or book. Or people. And people the, would give them a book, and then yeah. they would lend it out. They, well, they would scan it, and then they would lend out the digital. But they would do the same thing libraries do, which is one book, one ebook, one customer. They wouldn't lend out a 1,000 copies of the same book, that kind of thing. Except when COVID happened, Brewster said, no, 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 we're going to – people need books right now, so we're going to eliminate those rules. And that's when the publishers sued. The The – the thing they claim is a violation of copyright is something called CDL or controlled digital lending. Uh, and uh, it was, I was actually kind of surprised because we, on Sunday we had Stephen Levy uh, and we had um, uh, Kantrowitz, both of whom Stephen's written many, many books. Um, Kantrowitz's uh, most recent book is always day one about, uh, Amazon and both of them said, "Yeah." Been digging him more and more. He's I know. Pretty I love him. I'm good. I love him. Uh, but both of them said, "Yeah, S sock it to him, publishers." <laughs> <laughs> Jeff, you're a published author. Oh, really? Yes. Oh, I was yeah, a little I'm surprised. The yeah, because my interests and the publishers are not the same. When um, you know, when somebody sat down and said you should write a book, Jarvis, he said, he said. Um, don't do it because you think you're going to be famous. Don't do it to make money in the book. You do it because you're going to get the gigs. Yeah. So or the next book. Yeah. Well, it's, it's all of that. And so the more attention, it's an attention economy. The more attention my book gets, the happier I am. I'd, I'd love to have people just read it. And then you get, you get gigs and you get articles and you get excerpts and other things. Yeah. But if you're, if you're a publisher, you don't like that. And probably if you're a big guy like Levy, you don't like that. Maybe. Uh, Mike says, um, as much as publishers like to claim they love libraries, their actions here, and we don't, uh, I, it wasn't clear from the oral arguments on Monday what was, you know, what's going to happen. We'll have to wait till the Supreme Court rules. Their actions here speak quite clearly that they would destroy them if they could. Controlled digital lending is no different from how a library lends out books today. In both cases, it gets a physical copy of the book either through purchase or donation, proceeds to lend out that copy with the physical copy. It's literally that physical copy. With CDL, it's a scan of the book, but the scan's tied to the physical copy, just as I said, you know, one book, one lender. Every part of that has been deemed legal. Copyright law already has first sale rights written directly into the law and allow for the lending and reselling of copyright covered books without a license or permission. If, if I buy Jeff's fabulous new book about Gutenberg, BIT. Coming out in L June, available for pre-order now. BIT. You, you stepped on. I was going to give him the URL, dude. <laughs> BIT.ly slash buy Gutenberg. If 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 you bought that and I read it and I said, this is great, Stacy, you've got to read this. And I gave her my copy. That's legal, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. She ought to be. It uh, is. And then if she it doesn't, if she gives it to somebody else, that's also legal. Pass it along. Um the publishers uh, and some authors, including apparently Stephen <laughs> Levy, uh, argue that one, this interferes with the market for licensed eBooks, and two, there's a real difference in lending out the digital scans. They don't deteriorate the way the physical books do. So no, I guess that's, that's a bit of a stretch. They argument. feel like, oh, we're protected because uh, if 
if Stacy then lends it out and somebody else lends it out, eventually it's going to wear out. And, and Steve, how long has Gutenberg's Bible been around? <laughs> yeah. Well, okay. Well, yeah, but that's like behind glass and, you know, but there is a point, I would say, not just physical deterioration, but there is a friction element that is notable. It's very I easy mean, to lend an ebook, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. So I, I mean, I don't really feel for them because I, yeah. This is uh, because I love libraries and this is a money grab and they do get money. But, I mean, a library is cost for, correct me if I'm wrong here, but a library pays more for a book, like even a physical book than yep. a normal person would. And a library also pays more for an ebook license. And they're still only lending out one right. ebook per, like they might buy six licenses, but that means six people at one time can read it. So, it's not changing the nature of libraries, but what happened is people are using more eBooks because they, Libby is the reason, we'll be honest. <laughs> Libby, Libby made it so easy to check out and use eBooks that people are doing it when before to do an eBook and load it onto your Kindle or whatever eBook, your Kobo, um, it was hard. And now it's, it's like an app and it takes 20 seconds. Everyone I show this to is just like, what, are you kidding me? And then, they 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 then they read books forever on Eve, Libby and maybe they don't buy them. So I think that's what's changed here is getting access to these is so much easier. I apologize. You know? It's not the Supreme Court. It's a federal district yeah, court, no, it's court in New York. Okay. Yeah. Right. Oh. Um, I thought it was the Supreme Court for It'll some be reason. headed for the Supreme Court probably. But well, yeah, because the publishers are not going to rest. Um, the lawyer for the Internet Archive said there's no evidence publishers have lost. A dime in this. Uh, the judge, uh, federal judge John Quetacotal, um, during oral arguments, tough questioning of both attorneys suggested resolving this matter is a less straightforward task than either side has so far indicated. Cotal pointed out that because publishers have a right to control the reproduction of their books, the heart of the case was figuring out whether Internet Archive's book scanning violates copyrights by reproducing an already licensed physical book and then lending it without paying more license fees to the publisher. It's like the argument against DVRs for a long time was that the mere act of it passing through the recording of the DVR was a duplication and thus violated copyright. Yeah. That didn't last. Well, we'll watch. Ebooks did not kill print books. Print books have been going up during the pandemic. Book sales went up. Book publishers are okay. And it's, and by the way, it's a, it's a oligopoly of a few publishers. Yeah, it was just a, it's, it's like three, a, a handful, <laughs> a handful of uh, publishers, uh, all the big ones, though. That's the thing. Uh, all right. Well, we'll watch with interest. I suspect it will. As you say, I suspect it's not over. We probably will go to the Supreme Court. So this may go on for years. But it is worrisome. Yeah. Right, and I put this in the, the chat. Is this the chat? The IRC. Um, the story about protocol did a story all about this last year that was really good. And like it talks about like. And I'm sure the number has risen tremendously, but um, Overdrive hit just under 200 million checkouts in 2016, but in 2020, they surpassed 430 million. And I bet mm. if you look at it now, I mean, I, I'll i be real. I check out probably 200 books a year on my library. I would never physically buy that many, but... Right. I do check them out and I still buy books. I, I mean, I probably, but I only buy like 20 books a year, maybe 30 books a year. I would guess the people who go to the library and borrow books also are among the biggest spenders on physical books. Yeah. Well. No one else is buying 20 physical or right. even eBooks a year. I promise right. you that. <laughs> right. So you're kind of, you're, you're cutting off your nose to spite your face. By the way, let's point out this protocol, art, protocol article, which is excellent. Anna Kramer. And it's probably out of work because Protocol is another website that was shut down by its yeah. owners, Politico, uh, and uh, everybody else uh, cast to the four winds. Uh, well, the other thing that happened was, I'm trying to find it now, it's in the Gutenberg parenthesis out in June. I quote a study about... about um, is that the full title now, the Gutenberg parenthesis out in June? <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, Pre-order is available now. It'll change the title later. Um, uh, is that uh, Google a scanning of books which of course was going to be the mm. last thing the publishers went crazy on increased demand in all kinds of books and, uh, and, and publishers love their backlist and this pushes the backlist people discover the long books tail yep. how do you get a long tail without publicity well 
the publisher for my internet book is is basic Hachette, and they say, oh, we love the backlist. We want the backlist. Well, then you got to have the book exposed out there in all kinds of ways.